गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल फिल पिट में का स्ट्रेस ट्रेन का लेट मी कम टू द डायग्राम Uh, please switch off your mics because otherwise my voice will echo. Kindly switch off your mic. Now in the stress strain curve, if you see this uh, y-axis, the stress is uh, symbol is sigma. the unit says uh, newton per meter square in the x axis the strain will be measured with the symbol epsilon and units as meters so at the origin point when you are stretching a product or you are stretching a material uh, at tensile stress uh, the elastic stage is there where your stress is directly proportional to strain or sigma is directly proportional to epsilon and that stage your metal is observing hooke's law it states that stress the strain produced with that stress is directly uh, the strain produced is directly proportional to the stress applied on the material now after that there is a limit of proportionality now that limit of proportionality means is the border after which the stress will not the strain will not be directly proportional to stress now you putting more force or less force and then the strain is more so here from after the limits of proportionality to yield point the stress the strain is not proportional to stress now but within this limit that is till the yield point if you are removing the load the material is coming back to original position you remove the load the material comes back to original position so yield point or elastic limit is like if you are pulling a rubber band or you are pulling any wire you the stress the this uh, till uh, the permanent deformation will not take place still elastic limit after that the permanent deformation sets in so you remove the load it comes back to original position so this is the elastic stage still yield point it's an elastic stage but in yield point from limits of proportionality to yield point the stress the strain will not be proportional to stress and the metal is not observing hooke's law in this stage now you continue the stretch in the tensile stress you the metal enters the plastic stage so here even if you remove the load it will not come back to original position and the permanent deformation has set in there is another point in the stress strain graph that is uts that is the ultimate tensile strain that is the maximum stress you are applying to that metal here <clears throat> you can't apply more than this strain otherwise it will break so you are applying the maximum strain so that is the uts after that even if you remove or reduce the stress stress here if you see the stress is removed uh, reduced now but the strain is increasing eventually it will fracture or break at the break point so the stress strain curve the exam it comes in full paper uh, in your question of 25 marks uh, draw your stress strain curve and explain the points in it so you got to explain the limits of proportionality yield point uh, the uts the break point the plastic stage and the elastic stage the toughness is measured by the area under this stress strain curve 
so the more the area under this the more tough the material is that's why i came to this uh, stress strain curve first and then we'll come to the various points in this uh, stress strain curve So the first point which we have to explain is uh, limits of proportionality. So it is the highest stress prior to which deformation increases proportionally to the load applied, and it is the point beyond which the Hooke's law will no longer be true or it will not be applied, and it is the greatest stress that can be applied to an elastic body without causing permanent deformation. so the proportionality limit is proportional to the area of cross section the material the material type and loading will not influence on the proportional limit so it will all depend on the area of cross section or the limits of proportionality now if you see at this point the limit after that the say the strain is not directly proportional to stress here it is breaking at this point so that means uh, it is not very ductile because and not very tough because the area under this curve is less so this material is not exactly brittle but it's not ductile and the area under this uh, stress strain curve will be less so it will be less tougher second point which i will be explaining is the yield point that is at the limit for the elastic stage stage so it is the amount of stress in a solid at the onset of permanent deformation it is also called elastic limit marks the end of elastic behavior and the beginning of plastic behavior so when your stresses which are less than the yield point are removed the material returns to its original shape so here you can see a is the elastic uh, a and b both are in elastic limit in till a if the material the proportionality limit is there if you remove the load it will come back to original position no permanent deformation stress is uh, strain is directly proportional to stress till proportionality limit in b it's still the elastic limit but you come to the yield point after that you have permanent deformation sets in the plastic stage sets in so that's the yield point then d is the ultimate tensile stress and e is the breaking point where the wire thins or necks the weakest point now we come to the next uh, definition is uts or ultimate strength tensile stress so it's the maximum stress the material can withstand while it's being pulled or stretched before it fractures or breaks so it's a material's maximum resistance to fracture it is equivalent to the maximum load that can be applied by 1 square inch of cross sectional area when your load is applied as simple tension so it is also the maximum engineering stress in uni axle stress strain test so here you see uh, is the uts and uh, this region is the the entire region from here, this point will be your plastic region and this region will be the elastic region see again so in this diagram the strain hardening was given here that's wrong it is actually here strain hardening is between uh, the uh, yield point and uts that is the strain part hardening and between uts and fracture is your necking stage so here this uh, region is the strain hardening this region is the necking if you see you're pulling a metal in the tensile test 
and uh, the necking has not started now the neck has started and here eventually the neck will break which we have seen in the videos the neck is breaking so the necking stage is here so that stage starts after uh, at uts because the weakening point starts here so this is ductile material it's uh, the stress strain curve of a ductile material which is low carbon steel <clears throat> now we come to what is modulus of elasticity all this you have uh, studied in uh, physics i think it was in class 7th or 8th so it's a measure of stiffness and this all is coming under material science so it is part of uh, this is second year of engineering for also for you it is required because uh, for ship construction you have to understand how the material behaves <coughs> so is a measure of stiffness of elastic material so also known as young's modulus and the ratio of stress to strain is uh, denoted by e the area e is equal to stress by strain so elastic modulus is a quantity that measures the objects or substance resistance to being deformed elastically when the stress is applied to it an elastic modulus of an object is defined as a slope of the stress strain curve in an elastic deformation rigid so a stiffer material will have higher elastic modulus because the strain will be less and the stress will be more so e will be more when your uh, material is more stiffer now this is your original length and uh, you are pulling that material so you have extensions so the new length is ln so ln minus lo is the elongation which has occurred here so the strain will be delta l or the elongation divided by original length stress is force per unit area so stress by strain will be f by a divided by delta l by l so it will be l is going to come on top so it will be f into l divided by delta l into a that is e or young's modulus now when you are putting a stress on an object or a material that is a stress per unit area so sigma is equal to f by a so you have three types of stress here tensile stress when you are stretching the material compressive stress when you are shortening or compressing the material and shearing stress that is tend to shear the material like you loading a heavy cargo in one hold and the next hold you are having a light cargo so the bulkhead is going to experience uh, experience a shearing stress so shear stress is going to tend uh, 180 degrees apart from each other so you see what is going here and what is going down like you have shear uh, shearing uh, shearing force and bending moment curves so the shear one force is going all up and other force is going down so they are diametrically opposite to each other and the axis so both are acting 90 degrees to the axis of the material so tensile stress is tending to stretch the material this one in opposite directions compressive stress will be tending to squeeze the material here so when you have a hog or sag so if you have a sag the bottom plating will be experiencing tensile stress and the deck plating will have compressive stress and a hog it will reverse so shear stress is uh, causing an adjacent portion of material to slide against each other so here the shear stresses are going to occur when you are loading unevenly in the holes now we come to what is strain 
So strain is epsilon is a change in dimension divided by original value of dimension that is delta L by L. So strain is meter per meter or inch per inch. So basically the dimensionless quality, this will be dimensionless because uh, both uh, figures on top and bottom are cancelling. So it will be a dimensionless or a ratio, you can say. So delta L or a compression offset in an object divided by the length of object. So strain is a physical change in dimension of a specimen that results from applying a load in a test specimen. So the strain calculated by the ratio of change in length and the original length that is epsilon. So the strain units are dimensionless. So that's when the units are giving they usually are in inch per inch or millimeter per two millimeter. And percentage elongation is equal to strain in 200%. So here you have stress, force per unit area, and strain is change in length by original length. This graph we have already done. So any questions on this graph? Then we'll continue. Any questions on this graph? Uh, no, sir. ये तो सब पढ़ा हुआ है ना बट इम्पोर्टेंट है बिकॉज ट्वेंटी फाइव मार्क्स का क्वेश्चन इस पे आता है अकॉर्डिंगली आपको ये ग्राफ बना, ग्राफ बना के सब डिफाइन कर देंगे हो जाएगा बस हो जाएगा और क्या हाँ सर लेकिन क्लियरली होना चाहिए ना उसमें आपको गलती नहीं करो उसमें बहुत इजी है इट इज नॉट डिफिकल्ट इट्स वेरी इजी गलती गलती तो होती है ना वो तो फिर ह्यूमन है टू अर इज ह्यूमन अगर गलती नहीं करे तो भगवान बन जाएगा ना तो गलती तो आदमी करता ही है हाँ सर जो चेक पेपर चेक कर उसको ये याद रखना चाहिए कि टू एयर इज ह्यूमन तो नंबर ज्यादा नहीं काटना चाहिए अच्छा वाह वाह क्या बात है हा? ये तो बढ़िया बात कही कि अर इज ह्यूमन है ना तो उसके हिसाब से हमें भी नंबर काटने चाहिए क्यों हमने भी गलती की है नंबर हम भी काट लेंगे बात है है ना हम भी तो गलती कर रहे हैं पेपर चेक कर रहे हैं तो हमारे से भी नंबर कटेगा आपका बात वही है आप सर आप गलत लॉजिक लगा रहे हैं <laughs> हमारा लॉजिक तो अलग हो जाएगा ना फिर आपके लॉजिक के हिसाब से आप गलती करोगे तो हमारी गलती मार्क्स में हो जाएगी इसलिए तो आप गलती करोगे तो हमारे से भी मार्क्स डिडक्शन में बढ़ जाएगा इसीलिए ध्यान रखो अब हुक्स लॉ की बात करते हैं तो हुक्स लॉ क्या है कि स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेन जो होता है हुक जो हुक ने डिफाइंड किया था दैट वाज अ साइंटिस्ट इज अ फिजिसिस्ट के बॉडी चेंजेस शेप विद द इलास्टिक लिमिट एंड द रेशियो ऑफ स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेन रिमेंस कांस्टेंट तो स्लोप ऑफ द कर्व जो है वो सीधा रहे कर्व नहीं रहेगा तो स्लोप ऑफ दिस एनी द स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेन विल बी स्ट्रेट एंड This slope will be more. अच्छा ये बताओ अगर वो डक्टाइल मटीरियल होगा तो स्ट्रेस ट्रेन का जो ग्रेडियंट है वो हाई है कि लो है और अगर ब्रिटल होगा तो हाई है कि लो है ये बताओ चलो हाँ सर आपका एंगल की बात कर रहे हैं प्लास्टिक ऐसे जाएगा अभी आपको दिखाएंगे उसमें प्लास्टिक ऐसे करके ग्राफ जाएगा उसका ग्रेडियंट काफी कम है उसको ऐसे खींचा तो खींच ही गया पूरा है ना तो उसका टफनेस तो कम है क्योंकि वो ऐसे जा रहा है तो उसका एरिया कम हो जाता है ब्रिटल का ऐसे जाएगा तो उसका एरिया कम होगा उसका ग्रेडियंट ज्यादा होगा डक्टाइल का मीडियम होगा ग्रेडियंट ठीक है अभी आपको कंपैरिजन भी दिखाएंगे सो हुक लॉ हुक्स लॉ क्या है ये सारे मटेरियल पे नहीं चलता है रबड़ पे चलता ही नहीं हुक्स लॉ सो मेटल पे चलेगा बट रबड़ पे नहीं चलता सो हुक्स लॉ ओनली होल्ड फॉर सर्टेन मटीरियल अंडर सर्टन लोडिंग कंडीशन स्टील एग्जिबिट्स लीनर इलास्टिक बिहेवियर इन मोस्ट ऑफ द इंजीनियरिंग एप्लीकेशन 
and hooke's law is valid throughout the elastic range that is for stresses below heel strength to jaise hi aapka uh, proportionality ka khatam ho jata hai limit then aapka hooke's law nahi chalta aluminum hooke's law is only valid for portion of elastic length us se pure area mein nahi hota so for these materials a proportional limit stress is defined below which errors associated with linear approximation are negligible so rubber is non hookian because its elasticity is stress dependent and temperature dependent and loading rate dependent isliye agar aap dekho ki aapka jo hose hai tankers mein agar uh, chemical tankers mein bhi jo hose lagta hai zyada stress hoga zyada loading rate hoga तो उसमें स्ट्रेस बढ़ जाएगा और फट सकता है सिमिलरली टेम्परेचर डिपेंडेंट है सो इट इज नॉट फॉलोइंग बुक्स लॉ तो यहां जैसे ये आ गया है ये वाला फाइव इज योर नेकिंग स्टेज फोर इज योर स्ट्रेन हार्डनिंग एंड जो विद इन अप टू योर प्रोपोर्शनलिटी लिमिट इज योर Hooke's law after that till yield strength uh, is your uh, yield strength is your uh, elastic stage but it will not following hooke's law ab ye aapke various materials aa gaye ye brittle material hai jisme gradient sabse zyada hai strong material hai gradient usse kam hai and this is not ductile so ye yahan break kar jata hai jaise spring hai ductile material is more tough the area under this is more and it's got a uh, average uh, gradient plastic material ka gradient sabse kam hai and uh, iska toughness bhi kam hai so stress strain relationship of various materials ye wala graph bhi aap logon ko banana hai now if you see uh, various metals now ye aluminum hai copper ka aisa hai mild steel ka aisa hai nickel chromium molybdenum steel ka aise hai aur ek हैंड फील स्टील है ये उल्टी डायरेक्शन में जा रहा है जो हेलमेट में यूज करते हैं तो इट कैन टेक लॉट ऑफ शॉक्स ये उल्टी डायरेक्शन में जा रहा है अगर आप देखो तो डायरेक्शन इज हियर स्ट्रेन इसमें हो नहीं रहा है स्ट्रेस चाहे बढ़ाए जा रहे स्ट्रेन उतना ही है दैट इज हैंड फील स्टील विच इज यूज फॉर योर हेलमेट नॉट द प्लास्टिक हेलमेट वो स्टील वाला हेलमेट है तो ये ज्यादातर वो जर्मन सोल्जर्स थे ना पहनते थे सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर में तो दे वेर वेरिंग दिस हेलमेट्स ऑफ हार्ड फील स्टील तो जो बम गिरते थे वो सब इट कुड टेक दो इम्पैक्ट बम उनके ऊपर नहीं गिरते बट उसका जो स्ट्रेस है उसको ले सकते अब हम आते हैं ये भी कई बार आता है एग्जाम में कि वॉट इज properties of good ship building steel ab aap ship pe kaun sa steel use karte hain aur kyun use karte hain so zyada tar hum ship pe use karte hain mild steel ms wala sari plates aapki ms ki hoti hain that is mild steel ya hum high tensile steel use karte hain sir sts to Medium, sirf uh, uh, उसमें आपका बिकॉज न्यूक्लियर एक्सेस सबसे ज्यादा है तो आपका हॉक स्ट्रैक वहां ज्यादा होगा सिमिलरली बॉटम प्लेटिंग गाबोर्ड स्ट्रेक थिकनेस सेम रहती है ना कम होती है हाई टेंसाइल स्टील की थिकनेस कम होती है एज कम्पेयर टू एम एस स्टील इसलिए अगर उसमें कोरोजन हो गया तो फिर आपकी स्ट्रेंथ कम हो जाएगी वो थोड़ा एडवांटेजेस देखना पड़ा वो डिसएडवांटेजेस है और बाकी जब आपके मिडशिप सेक्शन आते हैं अगर आप देखो अगर मार्क किया होता हाई टेंसाइल स्टील कौन सा ग्रेड ऑफ स्टील दिया है ई ग्रेड डी ग्रेड ये सब आपको कराया हुआ है और नए बैच को तो अभी कराएंगे पुराने बैच का तो हो गया है सारा तो अभी आपका रिवीजन हो रहा है तो अब आप अपने क्वेश्चन पूछते रहो अब तो रिवीजन हो रहा है तो जो जो आपके डाउट्स आ रहे हैं पूछते रहो ठीक है आपका रिवीजन हो रहा है तो यस yes, है ना अप्रैल बैच का तो रिवीजन हो रहा है तो आप अब अपने क्वेश्चन पूछना शुरू कर दो जहां डाउट आते हैं वहां पूछ लो सो so, कार्बन कंटेंट जो है 
क्योंकि स्टील में आपके कार्बन होता है तो अगर ज्यादा कार्बन हो गया तो वो ब्रिटल बन जाता तो इसलिए कार्बन कंटेंट ऑफ माइल्ड स्टील जो होता है पॉइंट वन फाइव टू पॉइंट थ्री थ्री होता है बिकॉज वी हैव टू वेल्ड इट ठीक है वी हैव टू कट इट वेल्ड इट तो शिप बिल्डिंग के लिए सब चाहिए तो फॉस्फोरस एंड सल्फर कंटेंट पॉइंट जीरो फाइव परसेंट से ज्यादा नहीं होता अदरवाइज एक्सप्लोड कर जाएगा so suitable for flame cutting and easily welded because we have to do all those uh, cutting fabrications it should be ductile it should have homogeneous composition to prevent weaknesses homogeneous ka matlab hai uske jo uh, molecular structure mein the material should inside and the grain should be similar on all the areas not ke ek jagah mein concentration ho gaya aur ek mein kam ho gaya the high yield point or high uts is required here otherwise it will easily break kar jayega it should be resistant to corrosion and main thing is cost kyunki so, ship or ship building jab karte hain cost is very important now we will start with the initial type of iron which is known as pig iron pig iron basically is the uh, you can say raw iron इसका कोई यूज ऐसा होता नहीं है ये बिकम्स अ रॉ मटेरियल फॉर द वेरियस अदर टाइप्स ऑफ आयरन एंड स्टील सो जब फर्नेस में से निकलता है ये जो आयरन है दैट इज बेग आयरन फर्नेस में क्या होता है आयरन और ऑक्साइड एंड फ्लक्स ये सब ऐड करके डाल के हीट करते हैं काफी हाई टेम्परेचर पे सो so, इसमें जो इम्प्योरिटीज है वो निकल जाती हैं उसको स्लैग कहते हैं और जो बाकी प्रोडक्ट नीचे से बन, निकलता है इन द फर्नेस दैट इज द पिग आयर सो इट इज फॉर्म बाय पहले आप लोगों को वो भी पढ़ाता था बट अब बंद कर दिया मैंने पहले कैसे फर्नेस से बनता था उसके इक्वेशन ये वो सब पढ़ाते थे अब बंद कर दिया सो इट इज फॉर्म बाई ट्रीटिंग स्पॉन्ज आयरन और डी ये डीआरआई होता है ये किसी ने कैरी किया डीआरआई एनीबडी इज कैरीड डीआरआई तो डीआरआई बेसिकली इज गॉट एफिनिटी टू वाटर और एक्सप्लोड कर सकता है लग, आग लग सकती है इसमें तो उसको आ, आ, ट्रीट करते हैं विद स्पॉन्ज आर सो दैट इट लूजेस एफिनिटी टू वाटर एंड बिकम्स मोर स्टेबल बिकॉज दिस गॉट इज गॉट लॉड ऑफ एफिनिटी टू वाटर इन मॉइस्चर से रिएक्ट कर जाता है डीआरआई so pig iron kya hai intermediate product of iron industry it is also known as crude iron so it is obtained by smelting iron ore in blast furnace so it's got very high carbon content so it's about 3.8 to 4.7% plus isme silica hoti hai uh and other constituents of dross so basically सिलिका होने से इसमें ब्रिटलनेस ज्यादा हो जाती है इट बिकम्स वेरी ब्रिटल एंड दिस कैन नॉट बी यूज डायरेक्टली एज अ मटेरियल एक्सेप्ट फॉर लिमिटेड एप्लीकेशंस सो इफ यू सी वो मोल्ड्स में डालते हैं और वो मोल्ड्स में जो फॉर्मेशन बनती है इसको मोल्ड्स में डालते हैं खांचे में डालते हैं तो इसकी जो शेप लग रही है इट लुक्स लाइक पिग्स ऐसे लग रहा पिग्स बैठे सो दैट्स व्हाई द नेम इज गिवन एज पिग आर so it is a raw material for cast iron and wrought iron the second type of iron which we use is cast iron ab isme pig iron becomes a raw material usko hum melt karte hain with layers of coke ab ye coke aapka pet coke ya met coke hota hai petroleum coke ki baat kar rahe hain coke ka matlab nahi coca cola pet coke hota hai which is obtained from petroleum ek hota hai met coke which is metallurgical coke metallurgical applications mein hota hai and limestone that is calcium carbonate caco3 and poured into molds to cast in a desired shape so aapka jab ye iron banta hai iska naam cast iron isliye hai because melted mein hi ye khancho mein ya molds mein dal dete hain so that you can take the shape whatever you want it now the carbon content is still high not very high like your pig iron but still higher up about 2 to 4% so it 
So it's got strength, but it is brittle. And cast iron is a group of iron carbon alloys with carbon content greater than 2%. It's useful, it derives from relatively low melting temperature. So with this uh, relatively low melting point, good fluidity, castability, ex excellent machinability, it's got wear resistance, uh, resistant to deformation, plus these are also uh, not affected by corrosion. So these can be used in pipes, machines, auto parts, cylinder heads in engine room, cylinder blocks, gearboxes, uh, which you have for your cars, usme use hota. So it is resistant to damage by oxidation. So isme aap ko primer lagane ki bhi zarurat nahi hai. Kyunki isme the corrosion nahi hota. So ye aap dekho ye uh, bits jo aapke hai. That is made of cast iron. Now these bits are hollow. Why are hollow by bits? Why are your bits uh, hollow and why are bollards uh, solid? What reason is it? This is a tough question. Hai, yaar. Is mein kaun sa tough question. I have told you that bits are hollow and the bits are solid. Why? What reason is it? Why is it not? यार अब सेंटीमीटर हो रहे अब सेंटीमीटर हाँ वेट क्या तो आराम से बोलो ना डेड वेट को रिड्यूस करना है मतलब डेड वेट को डेड वेट बढ़ाना है लाइट शिप वेट को रिड्यूस करना है yes, अगर sir. आपके वेट्स कम होंगे शिप कंस्ट्रक्शन का एक रूल है कि अगर आपकी लाइट शिप वेट को रिड्यूस करना है इसीलिए अगर आप देखो मैन आपके जो लाइटनिंग होल्स बने होते हैं लाइटनिंग होल्स होते हैं ना टीवी टैंक में आज वो वेट रिड्यूस करने के लिए है तो वेट रिड्यूस करना है नाम ही इसी तरह बताया था उसका नाम ही लाइटनिंग होल आपने तो बताया इसीलिए तो बताया तो है लेकिन आप लोग दिमाग में रहे तब ना बताया तो बहुत दिमाग है सर दिमाग में है तब तो हां नहीं अभी तभी बोला है ना तभी मैंने कहा कि लाइट शिफ्ट वेट रिड्यूस करोगे तो डेड वेट बढ़ेगा डिस्प्लेसमेंट तो वही है है ना आपके ड्राफ्ट की डिस्प्लेसमेंट तो वही है तो हम हाई टेंसाइल स्टील क्यों यूज कर रहे हैं ताकि वेट कम हो और वेट कम होगा तो डेड वेट बढ़ेगा अर्निंग कैपेसिटी बढ़ेगी ये सिंपल फार्मूला शिप कंस्ट्रक्शन में चलता है ठीक है तो ये यही सारा फार्मूला चलता है इसीलिए हल्का हल्का करते हैं ये आपके व्हील्स हो गए ये आपके टोप बना टोप बनाने के लिए भी कास्ट आयरन यूज करते हैं हां भाई वो बड़े काम की चीज है ना तो तो भी कास्ट आयरन के बनते ये देखो आयरन इंडस्ट्री जो थी इंडिया में काफी पुरानी काफी हजार साल पुरानी है उस टाइम तलवारें ऐसी बनाते थे वो अब तो चलो वो नहीं बनती वो ढाल को काट देती थी पता है वो टेक्नोलॉजी थी इंडिया में पहले बहुत पहले जब राजा महाराजा बनाते थे उनकी तलवारें इतनी तेज होती थी कि वो जो ढाल है उसको भी काट देते आजकल वो नहीं बनती जापान में बनाते हैं जो उसके लिए लड़ाई वड़ाई तो करते नहीं बट वो भी बहुत तेज तलवारें बनाते हैं बहुत कॉस्टली होती है तो ये सब मेटलर्जी के हिसाब से है क्योंकि इंडिया में मेटलर्जी बहुत वास्ट थी अब उसके बाद अंग्रेजों ने उसको खत्म कर दिया सब दबा दबो दिया ताकि लोग भूल जाए तो अंग्रेजों ने कई चीजें हम लोग की गायब कर दी और अपनी चीजें डाल दी है तो ये कास्ट आयरन है अब आता है रॉट आयरन रॉट आयरन में सबसे अच्छा एग्जांपल आपका कुतुब मीनार के सामने कौन सा है पिलर बताओ भाई कुतुब मीनार में वो कॉम्प्लेक्स में एक पिलर है ना आयरन पिलर देखा है क्या यस yes, सर फोटो में अब वो आयरन पिलर कितने हजार साल पुराना उसमें जंग लगा है क्या नहीं सर जंग क्यों क्योंकि वो रॉट आयरन का बना है ठीक है तो आयरन पिलर सबसे अच्छा एग्जांपल और आइफल टावर है ये भी रॉट आयरन का बना है सबसे अच्छा एग्जांपल है रॉट आयरन का आयरन पिलर एक तो आपके सामने है और एक 
फ्रांस में आइफल टा सो इसका जो है इट इज मैन्युफैक्चर अगेन बाय पिग आयरन और इट इज इन विथ सिलिका इन कोल फायर्ड फर्नेस उसके बाद जब इसको मेल्ट करते हैं देन इट इज ड्रॉन बीटन इन टू शेप वाइल इट इज हॉट और फिर इसमें एक हीट ट्रीटमेंट देते हैं अब हीट ट्रीटमेंट आपको बाद में कराएंगे चार टाइप के हीट ट्रीटमेंट है ये हीट ट्रीट ट्रीटमेंट कराने के बाद ये इट बिकम्स वेरी डक्टाइल इसमें ब्रिटलनेस जो होती थी जो आपके दूसरे आयरन में होती है कास्ट आयरन में वो हट जाती so it can be used in anchors cables because they have to make it tough so raw iron se wo material becomes very tough anchors ko ab itni baar girate hain tootte thode na nahi tootte na unless usme koi defect ho aise hua tha na when i was master to maine superintendent ko bola bhai starboard anchor sahi nahi hai usko theek karao baar baar wo temporary repairs karte rehte the maine bahut complaints ki और फिर वो टेम्परेरी रिपेयर किया मैंने कहा भाई अगर पायलट यूज कर रहेगा तो मैं रोकूंगा नहीं है भाई तो कैलकटा में जा रहे थे वो हुगली रिवर एंड ऑल पैसेज में वो पायलट ने कहा स्टाबर्ड एंकर यूज करना आई कुड नॉट टेल हिम दैट हम नहीं यूज कर सकते क्योंकि भाई सुप्रीटेंडेंट ने बोला वो ठीक है और अब अगर मैंने मना किया तो पायलट चला जाएगा फिर हल्ला हो जाएगा मैंने कहा ठीक है भाई यूज करो भाई अब सडनली उसको शिफ्ट स्टॉप करना था तो आगे चीफ ऑफिसर था थोड़ा सा मूवमेंट था तो उसने ड्रॉप करवा दिया मुझे डर लगा कि अब गड़बड़ हो जाएगा अब ठीक है वहां खड़े रहे तो जब एंकर उठाया तो एंकर ही नहीं एंकर गायब हो गया तो वो टूट गया था बिकॉज उसकी वेल्डिंग डिफेक्ट्स थी मैंने बहुत कंप्लेन की थी कि वो वेल्डिंग डिफेक्ट और बार बार वही डिफेक्ट होती रहती थी अब मैंने तो पहले ही बोला हुआ था इनको ऑफिशियली सुप्रिंटेंडेंट वो तो कुछ कर नहीं पाया उनको पता ही था कि क्या होना है तो ठीक है मैंने मैसेज से डाल दिया उसके बाद एक टग लगना एक और वी हैव टू हैव एन एस्कॉट क्योंकि बोथ योर एंकर्स हैव टू बी रेडी व्हेन यू गोइंग हुगली रिवर ट्रांसिट तो एक टग हमने हमको एस्कॉट किया थ्रू आउट द पैसेज तो ये सुप्रिंटेंडेंट बेवकूफियों के कारण हो जाता है सो रॉट आयरन इज एन आयरन अलॉय विद लो वेरी लो कार्बन कंटेंट इन कंट्रास्ट टू कास्ट आयरन एंड हियर योर कार्बन कंटेंट इज लेस देन पॉइंट as compared to cast iron so it is a semi fused mass of iron with fibrous slag inclusions which give a grain resembling wood that is visible when etched or bent to point of failure to jab agar isko kaatoge so you have a lot of grainy uh, appearance in that this kind of wrought iron now your properties of wrought iron are it's soft ductile magnetic has high elasticity tensile strength it can be reheated reheated and worked into various shapes so it is uh, exhibits properties that are not found in other forms of ferrous material but it lacks your carbon content and it cannot be hardened because agar carbon content kam rahega to hardening nahi kar sakte in heat treatment so applications can be used for pipe making due to superior corrosion and fatigue resistance better welding threading qualities it is used for making bars for stay bolts engine bolts rivets because the properties demanded in this application are corrosion and fatigue resistance then it can be used for making plates it can be also used for making special chains crane hooks due to its high weldability and it's also used in forging application forging means uh, nuts and bolts isme ban jate hain to ye agar aap dekho eiffel tower bana hua hai chains bane hain these appliances uh, certain decorative parts your hooks your fencing that can all be made with wrought iron theek hai to abhi aaj ke liye itna bahut hai and uh, steel ka we'll start uh, next class because usme cementite perlite or austenite karenge those various uh, molecular shapes of uh, your uh, steel so ye grain like appearance kaise hoti hai kya hoti hai that we'll be doing in the next class theek hai to you you can ask your questions or you can just do relax for 4 minutes and then we'll have a break
थोड़ा रिलैक्सेशन देना पड़ता है आपको नहीं तो बहुत स्ट्रेस ट्रेन हो जाएगा तो ध्यान रखना पड़ता है आपका यस सो यू कैन रिफ्रेश योर सेल्फ फॉर नेक्स्ट फोर मिनट्स Okay, then we'll have a break now. With what uh, happens in your shipyard, how your preparation of ship is there, how the contract is signed, what is the contract there, what kind of designs are there, and how the cutting takes place, and the various aspects of shipbuilding. Now, we'll be doing. Now, this diagram is the layout of your shipyard. as for the areas now now this is the flow chart of what happens in your shipyard so you have a plate and section stockyard where your pieces are cut there uh, basically uh, steel plates are uh, stored there that's the plate section stockyard number 2 is the marshalling and preparation marshalling means you're preparing a uh, marking your uh, plates which is to be used where where the section is used is it the bilge area or is it the bottom plating or the hull plating where the prep, uh, plates will be used that preparation is there next is a plate and section ma machining so that means you want to join the pieces then 
the edges should be clean uh, uh, in your marshaling and preparation you are also subjecting it to short blasting so that your uh, mill scale is removed that is your rust scale a thin scale which is there on top that is removed and the uh, plates are ready for welding nowadays they also use laser a laser is much cleaner method earlier they were using sand blasting but sand blasting uh, causes silicosis which affects your lungs so it damages the lungs of uh, the persons who are doing this uh, sand blasting despite using uh, ppe that lung can be affected so laser is a new technology which is being utilized in uh, clearing up your mill scale and rust you might have seen those uh, technologies uh, that on your youtube or on your uh, whatsapp lot of things had come regarding this i think two years back and all uh, how that laser works for removing rust and not damage your skin also so you know laser technology being used for uh, removing of your cataract also it's a fine pointed light so whenever you point light at a point it can cut you may been trying out that uh, in your child time when you use a lens for sunlight and you can burn a paper so similarly laser can cut out anything similarly you have water if you have a very fine thin fine pressurized stream of water you can cut through steel plates also so when you pinpoint anything that can cut it even your radar if you pinpoint it it can cut it so you have to expand it for radar gauging so all those things you have to know why you pinpoint that light okay so this is the administration office where your administration takes place what activity is going on in your shipyard then you have unit uh, unit assembly area where your assembly and sub assemblies are joined to form units which are larger sections of uh, 3d dimensions of uh, sections maybe uh, but, uh, your uh, four peak tank uh, four peak tank is there or any items which are more than 20 tons become unit then the module assembly pallet preparation engine shop these are all added here the blocks are fabricated the blocks are joined then you are uh, you are slipped into a building dock in between you have the fittings done here your uh, scanners and uh, then this is the uh, covered building dock and then you are uh, slipped on into the uh, filling out basin where you have the the fittings like your uh, scanners and areas all are connected here and uh, your anchors are connected here along the with the cables then you are taken for to the main uh, transported uh, either from the uh, fitting out basin you are shipped to uh, the sea side area or maybe if you are near to the sea then from the fitting out basin you are slipped on with the via the locks to the sea so that's what sea trials are now so that we'll be doing what a sea trial on so this is the typical layout of your shipyard now in this shipyard you have a product you have a process you have facility sub resource you have human resources you have space and layout and a schedule of how uh at what time and what schedule your activities will take this is the layout of shipyard where you have cutting sub assembly mid assembly heavy assembly outfitting painting and uh, fitting the other equipments so that is uh, starting from here and then you end up here and then you have a launching of the ship yeah, ship and all so the material requirements are met using simulation various vendors will supply what is the input required volume how do you plan with logical simulation because your scheduling has to be done you cannot be out of schedule because you have signed a contract uh, with the client who is going to purchase your ship so there's a customer who is a buyer of the ship or the client 
so there is a design given to him by the shipyard a preliminary design with which he accepts uh, and then when that is finalized a contract is signed then you have a primary supplier a secondary supplier the warehouse where you have sub assembly assembly and then finally launching and the customer then takes over the ship so this is your layout of shipyard you have dry docking facility you have painting facility you have solvent degreasing cutting vessel clearing cleaning all that activities in the shipyard so here you have a construction bay rail mounted environmental shelters floodable launching way slide launching way dry dock and rail mounted environmental shelters so this is all there in the shipyard you see this is the floodable basin from there and then the lock from where they can be transported to the sea so if you are uh, inland because normally your uh, shipyard is normally next to the sea so that becomes easy for uh, slipping out to the sea otherwise it can be inland and then they are transported by trailers they are small ships to the sea for big ships of course you have to be near the sea now your steel plates and sections are stored in the stockyard they are fed into individual shot or grid blasting shot are basically steel balls which with they hit or grit is all uh, the stone material small stone material which is blasted so your mill scale is cleared up and then you have a coating with suitable primer nowadays you have laser also being used there for the simpler purpose then the plates are marked and cut and bent into suitable dimensions and shapes your edge preparation of plates for welding is done at the stage and then you have joining of plates you will have uh, either butt welding which is vertical welding or seam welding which is horizontal welding so these are welded to form sub assemblies and assemblies and then units the sub assembly is several pieces of steel making up a two dimensional part and weighing up to 5 tons which together with sub assemblies will form a unit assemblies consist of larger usually three dimensional structures of plating and sections weighing up to 20 tons so units are complex built up sections of a ship including complete forward and can be including collision bulkhead where uh, which can weigh up to 20 tons uh, up to 100 tons finally the units are joined together to form a ship now this is ship building just second i'll take a second now now this is your uh, flow chart of your ship building process so that is your ship owner's requirement he sees he says okay i want a bulk carrier of 50000 tons then you have a design done a concept design a basic design detailed design we'll all do what all these things are in detail so after the detailed design you have a part fabrication pre processing then part assembly block assembly and then the machine you can uh, order from other people unit assembly your pipe receiving fabrication out uh, block fitting can be done during block assembly or this units can be fitted when your structures are erected block assembly painting pre erection and then erection of the structures join the structures together launching outboard fitting onboard fitting and then operational and sea trial and finally delivery after successful sea trial 
that is a full ship building process so you can make this kind of flow chart as a process of ship building when the question is asked the layout is there the first diagram which we had done that is to be made similarly this is also a ship building process you can make either this or the earlier one you have a draw uh, drawing approval and receipt material estimation what is the cost material receipt and inspection surface preparation and priming element cutting sub assembly assembly erection of the blocks the blocks are joined together and then erection of the blocks and then you will have machinery outfit piping electrical in between you can have a dry survey of the tanks here uh, not of the hull because hull is being fitted and then tank testing hose test underwater fitting out outer hull blasting and painting you're fitting that machinery installation outfitting of accommodation uh, works and the piping pipeline testing of pipe system electrical fittings cable routing commissioning key in sighting draft marking load line principles dimension check and the vessel is shifted and launched include and then inclining experiment is done and then the commissioning and sea trial so inclining experiment is done uh, uh basically uh, inside when they are launched initially uh, and then then the sea trial and commissioning is done and then the delivery is done so you have the previous functions now earlier there was a reference data so you have uh, the present future and all how the ship building has been done so you have a feasibility study conceptual design preliminary design contract design basic design and detailed design so earlier we had a reference data nowadays we do research data and the future will be simulation based ship building uh past was experience formula now the data based present and simulation will be future lines plan general arrangement drawing presently lines general arrangement computer aided design cad uh, next future will be simulation so cost the cost here again simulation performance drawing cad and cam that will be uh, now future is uh, simulation simply machine drawing uh, cad and then simulation then your block division fabrication assembly erection outfitting and painting past was piece now is block future simulation past was manual cutting now is numerically control automatic cutting future is simulation assembly will be assembly sub assembly block grand block simulation grand block here pe block and simulation on board outfitting on board outfitting and simulation on board painting block painting and simulation so this is the design technology which will be used in the future for with the simulation based ship building so is is integrated system and mi is manufacturing information which is here cost integrated system this one p is pre erection here so a certain uh, words they have used that p block is pre erection block so if you see the steel cutting done the block erection fabrication erection block assembly launching outfitting commissioning sea trial and final delivery similarly cutting fabrication assembly blasting painting and pre erection mega then load out so you have various uh, engineers officers staff working on this day to day and uh, this requires your naval architect designers and show staff working for ship building so the initial stage is inviting tenders so you will have global tenders for ship building by the owner or by the client so because he has to check the prices and the bids from various uh, ship builders is a small uh, ship and all then he will not go it, going to take uh, so much effort it's a big ship involving a lot of money of course global tenders will be there so small ship 1000 ton of course uh, he is not going to do so much exercise so the ship builders will make a proposal based on the request given by the client and the bid proposal is very important because the client decides to give the contract or not maybe it is of uh, so many million uh, dollars 
so he has to decide what are the cost what is the reliability of the ship builder uh on what are the previous ships he's built uh any faults in that ship builder what is the cost ratio how much time he is going to take all that will be considered while giving a contract so the proposal by the ship build uh, ship uh, builders will give rough idea of how the ship is going to be and uh, what will be the cost involved and what will be the fuel consumption because that is very important even when you purchase a car even if it's a costly car you will say abhi kitna mileage degi so that is a very important concept in ship building also how much will be the fuel consumption so the next step in ship building process is uh, discussions the specification because you uh, you have certain specifications of breadth length length overall lpp what kind of uh, engines you'll have what will be the fuel consumption all that will be discussed and you get an agreement once the bid proposal is accepted the client will uh, decide the specification of the ship and the details and specifications will help them decide what the final price is going to be along with the time period it will take for completion of the ship so once the details like ship building process and layout is decided then the agreement is made between the two parties and the legal formalities and agreements are completed and that agreement is uh, accordingly placed in the respective courts so that in case they have an arbit uh, this agreement or they are ready for arbitration so they will not give it to the court uh, the courts take a lot of time so normally they have decided uh, an arbitration court in that contract okay that arbitration will be done so and so and arbitrators will be so and so because courts you know take a lot of time in deciding now your different design phases are the performance design which is very important point in ship building because the most important factor here in design is speed and fuel consumption so before actually starting to make any design the ship models are tested in a tank so those uh, bases you are models are made this basis your specifications and then they do that hydrostatic testing in the tanks for the various parameters bases simulated wave heights rolling uh, all those things will be checked torsion uh, your racking stresses all the stresses will be checked with the simulated waves in the tank plus they also measure the speed and uh they also measure the fuel consumption basis the model so apart from other things the ship design if the hull is not formed in desired manner the real ship will not achieve the desired speed so the stage is necessary in the ship design so after the initial formalities and tank testing phase the design phase will start so there are three sub phases in the design space you know so first this phase is your performance design and the performance design will have uh, three sub phases that is the basic design the detailed design and the production design so these designs basically differ in the level of details and refinement so this is a concept design you've seen this kind of models in a lot of ship owners they keep it uh, handy there in the front office as a display uh because uh, during the design concept this was given by the ship builder to them for finalizing so that they display in the front office now your design optimization how your design is optimized you have an input data given by the owner requirements of uh, and or parent hull that's the dead weight payload speed maximum draft initial arrangement profit expectation and the variation of design parameters will be the hull form arrangement of spaces arrangement of main outfitting structural arrangement network arrangements piping electrical which is the parametric model of the ship geometry and outfitting and basis that you will have an optimization criteria that is uh, 
performance or efficiency indicators, minimizing of environmental impact. So you have EEDI also, that is for NX6 also done in the design nowadays. So that is your energy efficiency design index, uh, which I think you know about it. EEDI, have you studied what is EEDI? NX6 SEEMP Have you studied SEEMP? Ship Energy Efficiency Management Plan, NX6. The second way to go, you have to go to the second way. Surprising, you have to go to the second way. 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 चलो भाई तो कैसे निकल गए सेकंड मेट में अब फंस जाओगे हर बार तो नहीं निकल सकते ना सो ईईडीआई भी इसमें आता है एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी डिजाइन इंडेक्स सो व्हाट इज द एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द शिप दे हैव टू बी डिटरमाइंड बाय द शिप बिल्डर आल्सो बिकॉज़ द इंपैक्ट ऑन एनवायरमेंट शुड नॉट बी देयर मिनिमाइजेशन ऑफ बिल्डिंग एंड ऑपरेशनल कॉस्ट मैक्सिमाइजेशन ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉफिट इज उसको होते हैं रिटर्न ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट रिटर्न ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट का मतलब है कितने साल में ही इज गोइंग टू रिकवर द मनी नॉर्मली 6 टू 7 इयर्स ऑफ रिकवरी इन मनी इज गुड इनफ इफ इट इज बियॉन्ड दैट देन देन इट्स नॉट प्रॉफिटेबल और सो जब 12 साल लग जाएंगे रिकवरी ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट्स अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम एंड मिनिमाइजेशन ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट रिस्क रिस्क सो फॉर दैट यू हैव टू Insure because, of course, the money can uh, go out if you don't insure. So that's uh, minimization investment risk. And then the constraints uh, basis your design or your regulation set by your class and societies, uh, market demand supply, cost of major items, uh, fuel, workmanship, and then the dependent constraints. And that will give you desired output. So all these things have to be considered during your design optimization. So basis your performance design, the first phase which we do is uh, basic design. So it's mainly concerned with making the ship comply to the requirements of the client in terms of load cap carrying capacity. Ek bar aapko jara EEDI bata dun, kyunki aap log bhi aise hi bad gayo chup chaap, koi jawab deta nahi hai. At least unko EEDI dikha dete hain kya hai. नहीं पढ़ा तो ठीक बात है नहीं पढ़ा तो अभी दिखा देते हैं इसमें घबराने की बात नहीं So EEDI, EEOI, and SEMP. So basically, EEDI is Energy Efficiency Design Index. That the performance of the ship, hardware of the ship. So when you're making that ship, what will be the design index basis? This. So you have to verify that by the class so that it will be uh, complying to MAPOL NA6. This is the requirement of new ships now. This is your sea trial and all. You have to all check it out whether your design index is correct. And your SEMP is your shipboard energy efficiency management plan. And EOI is energy efficiency operational indicator. That is a performance improvement by the efforts in operation so that you comply with ship energy efficiency management plan. So that will be complying with that. So your EEDI performance index is uh, this. 
that is basically gram ton per mile that is edi and edi eoi is also gram ton per mile and that is the index performance indicator showing that you are complying with your semp basis speed control weather routing well maintenance optimum trim and draft so here you have edi is the design the ship efficiency of efficient ships SEMP is a plan to improve the efficiency of the ships and the operations for that and EOI is basically monitor energy efficiency and collect the data for improvement the ships that is done by EOI so basically this is your SEMP measures the hull monitoring propulsion system waste heat recovery optimized ship and cargo handling energy management of ship records and feedback to the company and weather routing Just show you what is this certificate. Now this is your EEDI index certificate that is given for the energy efficiency, and that's based on calculation method published by re resolution of ME MEPC guidelines for the method of calculation of attained energy efficiency design index for new ships, and verified along with the lines of resolution MEPC on survey and certification of this. so the relevant data verification will be done and then will be excess value will be basis gram per ton nautical mile so what gas so co2 is that for the greenhouse gases so that is your edi i hope you know now what is this Now your basic design, as as we were talking about, is part of your performance design. So it's concerned with making the ship comply with the requirements of the client in terms of your load carrying capacity or whatever nature and type. Like, is it a bulk carrier or a tanker? What is the fuel storage? What is the consumption capacity? What is the ship stability and forth? All these factors are linked. and that will be the factor of speed that's very important for basic design then you have a detailed design these all are the performance design all the three are in the performance design so after your basic design your next stage of detailed design that involves more details than the first step so your design model will have more details so that will be more practicable during implementation stage and uh, with this your ship can be built more accurately and as per design and the designers ensure that the they make the ship that is close to the original specifications so if they feel that there is anything that cannot be as per original design or they are finding it difficult then they have to inform the client but they have to ensure that the performance specifications should not be compromised and the performance ability of the ship should not be compromised the third phase of your performance design your production design so that will give more actual drawings of the components and uh, that will be coming from the field stuff it actually produces components but you know that everything cannot be built in the shipyard so they have to get the supply from your vendors and then fit the yard for complete construction so that that can be your main engine or bulbous power or auxiliary equipment all they can get it from the vendors because maybe the shipyard is not manufacturing everything further that if the shipyard manufactures everything then the cost might go high because the time period will be more so they order it from the various vendors so that your time of completion is also reduced so once all the above steps are done then the plan is more or less prepared that the ship builder moves to the next phase is ordering the materials from various vendors so a lot of material is being used here so acquiring will take time so the delivery dates he will be scheduling from the vendors and procuring the metal so uh, material so that he complies with the completion period time because he has to complete maybe in 2 years so that he has to monitor that also because there will be a clause might be a clause by the client of a uh, delay clause in the contract that he if he delays more than 3 months then the penalty he has to pay 
so the ship builder will try to ensure that everything is done in the time period designated so now the preparation of ship building is done and the materials acquired so next phase is the production plan which is critical because the things have to be coordinated to be ensuring that your production will go as per the schedule so the job assignments must be made in a realistic manner so that your targets can be reached and your plan should be a little flexible so that your targets can be reached it's not should not be very rigid otherwise it will be a problem for uh, the ship building so the delivery should happen and the production will go as per the plan now your steel cutting is the next important stage because now the parameters are known the design is known the sizes are known the steel cutting has to take place so that is normally nowadays done by numerical control precise because uh, if human start cutting then uh, maybe the error might be there so the precise cutting will be done and processed as per the plan or the blueprint that was prepared during the design stage now the blueprint why the name came up is uh, earlier when your plans were made they were carbon copied and the carbon copy used to give a blue hue that is why the blueprint came up so the steel plates are heated and bent because you have the bilge areas where the bending is to be done so they are heated and bent so that they can be curved and making the correct shape takes a lot of expertise and it's also very critical function of ship building so if you have a mistake here then there will be a lot of problems there because it will jeopardize your full plan now comes the plate assembly so you cut your steel plates process components to assemble them the assembly is done block by block <laughs> it's not done uh, earlier they were doing it just uh, making the keel and connecting it that was taking a long time now the prefabrication is done and then they make a block there and then they join the blocks it's like when you are metro uh, when you had the metro rail fitting up the cement blocks were prepared in so many areas then were transported to the site and then joined together to form the base for the line or the support because if you start building in one area and uh, it will take a long time no chinese buildings they are building very fast multi story building they build maybe in 15 days or one month maximum that is all prefabrication of blocks <coughs> but in our in, in india of course it will take maybe 5 years 10 years to make a multi story building so this ensures the manufacturing efficiency is maximized and assembly is carried out by in a phase to by phase manner the first is a small scale assembly followed by a mid scale assembly a larger uh, sections are there and then is a large scale assembly where you are fitting all the things to form units so units joining becomes a large scale assembly and one of the most vital stages is building installation is rigging and uh, and the assembled blocks are joined together huge blocks are made and there your after your joining your pipelines electric wires and wires are installed so to enhance the efficiency of manufacturing process and to ensure efficiency of dry dock this is done then the rigs are in place until the block is docked on the ground now your blocks are joined together that's mounting of blocks in the stage huge blocks are installed into ship using the rigs and cranes the stage is vital because your specification has to be met so sometimes as many as 10 blocks are joined and uh, you have to see that your dimensions are met and that becomes a challenge for the engineers now the launching is to be done so in this stage the dock is filled up with water so that the ship can float in it and at this stage your ship slowly moves into sea and the ship builders ensure that they celebrate and uh, this is also called operation at the quay 
so in that stage your hull that was launched is quality checked and every part of system is checked to ensure that everything is placed so this is one kind of launching i'll show you the various kinds of launching you have airbag launching which is for small ships you have your gravitational type launching which is side launching and then you this is mechanical for small boats and all so they just place it in water and this is your floating dry dock this flotation out type of ship launch then comes your sea trial so your speed your instrumentation operational conditions of your engine and everything your turning circle advanced transfer everything is checked here to ensure that your ship is exactly as per specifications and uh, the speed of the ship is very critical for meeting your client satisfaction that's your sea trial then you have a final delivery at this stage your ship is delivered to the client and the engineer uh, chief engineer and captain prepare for ship made in voyage so the various processes are involved in ship building and this is uh, following steps to ensure that ship building is complete because this is a teamwork process now the organization on your shipyard will have a uh, the various teams there which will be taking your ship builders instruction and uh, the raw materials for construction finish items labor force which is steel workers welders uh, your uh, cutters your uh, plumbers turners engine fitters all these will be in the team so management is headed by chairman and maybe they have a board of directors consisting of 6 to 12 members from the technical commercial sectoral department and outside team also so chief departments are design drawing estimating offices planning production control shipyard department for construction up to launching and then outside finishing department for on board work after launching plus uh, the department for purchase department store keeping department and yard maintenance department so the construction hall is only one of the ship builders responsibility as the as soon as the contract is placed he should negotiate with subcontractors for supply of items which a shipyard does not produce which is electrical power plant propulsion shafting propellers engine room auxiliaries deck machinery anchor cables furniture furnishing all they order then your ppc is production planning and control is done for covering your subcontracts assembly and installation the cost they have to reduce because they have to make profit so now comes what is the basic design of the ship so the owner require the ship which will give him the best possible returns for his initial investment and the running cost so this means that the final design should be arrived at giving into the account not only the present economic consideration but also the future so with the aid of computers you can make a study of large number of varying design parameters and uh, they have to see that the technical feasibility as well as like economic efficiency is obtained so your preparation of design will have three stages what is the concept design the preliminary design and contract design the concept design is uh, the, when the concept is given to the client okay this is the design so this provides sufficient information basis your basic technology techno economic assessment of alternatives which is your ship type dead weight type of propulsion and service speed now basis that uh, this design concept design then the model is tested and all and after testing your preliminary design is done which is your refining and analyzing the agreed concept design filling out your arrangements and structure to uh, optimize your service performance then your ga plan is discussed and the preliminary body plan this i'll be coming to in detail so that we'll be coming to what is the lines plan and all so the body plan is part of lines plan we'll be doing the next class so that is sufficient to allow the evaluation of stability and of cargo capabilities capacities and then the provision of what kind of power you will have on ship 
Then what is the estimation of your light shift weight? What is the cost estimation? That will be done in the preliminary design. Now, finally, the contract design is done because this is this design the contract is signed. So detail the final arrangements and systems agreed with the owner satisfying the built-in contract conditions. So these are ready at this stage, which is what is your ship's specification? What is the speed? What is the fuel consumption? What is the GA? The body plan will be in detail. So that means the lines plan will be in detail to allow manufacture of scale model for testing in hydrodynamic towing tanks. Then the classification drawing of the structures with this midship section, typical bulkhead, shell expansion, bow and stern structures will be made. These plans will be made. Stability and longitudinal resistant computations, the diagrams of uh, piping, which is cargo ballast, bilge, and firefighting will be made. So after your design is finished, after this design is finished, then a lines plan is made for the plate cutting and uh, the designing of the ship, actually. So with once the design is finalized, the lines plan is made. This plan is a scale drawing of molded dimensions of the ship in plan, profile, and section. Plan means a top view. Profile is a side view and section view. So all these views will be done. And your plan view will be your half breadth plan. Profile view, the side view will be your shear plan. Section view will be the body plan. All three plans comprise of lines plan because you have all the lines here, nothing else. So they are basically projection of intersection of the hull with series of planes. So suppose you have a hull, you're cutting it side uh, transversely, you'll create a body plan. If you are cutting it fore and aft, uh, then you will have a shear plan. If you're cutting it from bottom on every draft, uh, horizontally at every draft meter, that will give you a half breadth plan. We will discuss all that, how that is made. Now, the planes in this cutting will be at equidistance, maybe every meter, so that your uh, planes are mutually perpendicular or orthogonal in nature. So, that discussion we will do. I will just uh, take the prelims of your. Uh, Lines plan to you, make you understand, and then we can have it off. Sir, iske notes bhej diye. Beta, ye mail ID aaya nahi hai, to mail ID toh bhejwao. Mail ID toh aana chahiye na. Purane batch ke paas hoga, purane batch ko mila ke nahi. मेल में साजन को बोल आपके आपके जो पुराने बैच को तो आपके नोट्स मिले हैं उसमें ढूंढना पड़ेगा ये वाला चेक करना अच्छा वो सबको एक साथ भेज देंगे ना इसलिए उनके जरा मेल आईडी मिल जाए ना फिर सबको एक साथ भेजेंगे ना फिर कंफ्यूज हो जाएंगे कि उसको मिला कि उसको नहीं मिला एक बार वो मेल आईडी मिल जाए ना अभी के बैच के तो मैं फिर सबको एक साथ भेज दूंगा दोबारा सो दैट आपके पास दोबारा मिल जाएगा आपको है ना आई एम जस्ट वेटिंग फॉर योर मेल आईडीज एक बार आ जाए तो मैं सब भेज दू अब ये लाइंस प्लान आपका है अगर आपकी कटिंग ऐसे है आपने ऐसे ऐसे कटिंग की है इक्वी डिस्टेंस पे तो आपको मिलेगा बॉडी प्लान अगर आपने फोर एंड हाफ कटिंग की है तो आपको मिलेगा शेयर प्लान अगर हमने बॉटम से प्लेटिंग काटी है तो आपको मिलेगा हाफ ब्रेड प्लान तो अभी वो क्या एक बार डिस्कस करते हैं ठीक है प्लान के बारे में और मैं चेक करूंगा मेल आईडी आया कि नहीं साजन ने भेजा कि नहीं कल मैंने चेक नहीं किया था देखता हूँ आया कि नहीं तो इस कटिंग से आपको मिलेगा बॉडी प्लान वो डिस्कस करेंगे आफ्टर टी ठीक है सो लेट्स हैव टी एंड देन आई डिस्कस ऑल ओके